Cecily, I'm going to add the playlist to the chat one more time because you just joined, so it's in there for you all. Um, let's pick our card for today. We have 45 minute glute strengths. Um, the focus, this one's going to be difficult, <laughs> but the reason it's okay, so the focus for the next four weeks is to increase your deadlift weight. The reason that's difficult is because you're at home. So you don't have access to probably your full potential. Um, so there's different ways that we can kind of test and assess whether or not we're getting stronger in our deadlift. So one way to test that is film yourself, look at your form. I'm also more than happy to do video chat or text back and forth um, to coach you on that beyond this class. The other way that we can start to test this, given that like say my heaviest kettlebell here is 35 pounds, in a minute, how many deadlifts can I do? Not fast, but at what point do I hit fatigue, right? Or better yet, single leg deadlift. Can I increase my weight on single leg deadlift, right? So at some point over the next four weeks, testing yourself and seeing if you can increase your weight also, there's always a little encouragement from me to feel free to order yourself some heavier weights. Um, when it comes to kettlebells, sometimes it's better to order two of the same size and then you can get into your deadlifts with two kettlebells, okay? As opposed to just one really massive one that you probably won't use that often. So if I had two 35s, obviously that creates, what, I'm terrible at math, but 70, 75 pounds, 70 pounds? Um, that's better than the 35, right? And I can still press 35s or I can do other work with 35s. So it's more applicable to use two, dumb, two kettlebells rather than one super, super heavy one. Okay, our card for today. We've pulled this one before. I am so excited about how much is still in store for me to receive. I'm excited, are you excited? There's some shit going down in the world as there always is. But uh, we're gonna focus here on ourselves for 45 minutes and uh, let's crush it. Here we go. So 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We are going into monster taps and then we'll be going into single leg touchdowns with a knee drive. So hip sling is on, it's right above the knees. <clears throat> We'll go side to side with our monster taps. Then we'll take this off and go into our single leg touchdowns. All right, taking off in four, three, two, and one. So hip hinge position, drive the band out. Take one foot out to the side, bring it in. Take the other one out, bring it in. Notice that when you tap out to the side, you are not transferring out, okay? We are not doing this side to side like this. Today we're staying very centered. Tap, so there's a slight lean to one side as you tap on out to the other. What this is going to be doing is forcing this leg to stay a little bit more steady, rooted, and solid. Beautiful, four seconds left right here. Quick transition of taking that band off in three, in two, and one. Take it on off. Standing on your left leg, you're gonna reach for the floor with your right hand, and then drive the right knee up. Here we go, 30 seconds on. Reach on down with the right hand, drive the right knee up. Now, I don't care if that back leg or your right leg is bent or straight in the back position, but what I do care about is can you maintain a nice straight spine? Beautiful. Shoulders and hips stay square. We have 10 more seconds right here. Drive, hip hinge, and drive. Beautiful. That knee drive at the top, three, two, and one, will help kind of get into the glute a little bit more. Standing on the right leg, we'll reach with the left hand, in four, remember knee drive up at the top, three, two, here we go, hip hinge down, and drive. Hip hinge down, and drive, keeping the core pulled in. Again, more worried about can you maintain a straight spine than the height of the leg. Beautiful, drive. Taking your time, we have 12 seconds left right here. Inhale down and reach, exhale drive. We have seven. Nice job. We have three, two, and one. Band goes back on. Monster taps. We'll go through this two more times. Woo! Three, two. Here we go. Hip hinge. 
and we tap, tap. Awesome, beautiful work. Today we will be going into, we have a bunch of stuff to cover, but we'll be going into a stiff-legged dead, uh, <laughs> stiff deadlift as opposed to a traditional deadlift. For the most part, you see me demonstrate with stiff-legged, which is also called Romanian. So it's not that the legs are locked out. There is a slight bend. Three, two, and one. Going into our single leg touchdowns. I'll review this as we get into it. Again, standing on the left leg, right leg is gonna go back, reach with the right hand. Here we go. Coming on down and driving up. So if we take this as an example, this would be a single leg deadlift position. This right here would be more of a traditional deadlift. A stiff-legged would be a little bit more here. So there's more depth in a traditional. Hips rise up in a stiff-legged, or like I said, also referred to as a Romanian deadlift. Beautiful, we have three, we have two, and one. Switching over to the other side. Four, three, two, here we go, reach on down and drive. Reach on down and drive. There's nothing wrong with bending the knees, bringing yourself lower to the ground, making that hand touch the floor, something possible, something accessible. But if you've got the mobility, you can try to be in more of that stiff-legged position. Excellent. 10 seconds right here. Hinge and drive. Hinge, drive. We have three, two, and one. Lost my balance there a little bit. Okay, one more time with our band, side to side. Three, two, and here we go. Hip hinge and tap, tap. Now, if your hands are right here wrapped around your hips, you should feel your glute medius, which is way up here. You should feel that contract as you step out. Beautiful. Belly stays pulled in. We have 15 seconds left right here. 10 more seconds. So, so good. Come on. Shoulders down the back, relaxing your neck. We have three. We have two. And one. Final round on our single leg tap downs. Go ahead and get into the starting position. Kind of that little hip hinge, slight bend to the knee. And here we go. Hip hinge down and drop. Belly stays pulled in nice and tight. We have about 22 seconds left. Nice. External rotation with the standing leg, avoiding crashing down onto the hand as you reach. How much control can you have on the way down? Eight seconds left. Drive. Five. We have three, two, and one. That burns. Yeah. Other side. Five, four, three, two, and here we go. Hip in depth and drive. Beautiful. We have external rotation. Belly is pulled in. Spine is nice and long. Notice any differences between the two sides. Does one feel more natural? Does one feel more accessible than the other side? If so, work on the one that's challenging you a little bit more. Beautiful. We have four, three, two, and one. Ooh. Like I said, that's a burner. Those always get me. I love those. Okay. So going into our first set, four movements, 10 seconds to transition, which is not a lot of time. So just be mindful, try to transition quickly. And if you're a little behind, it's okay. So what we're starting with are shoulders elevated, sorry, feet elevated, banded, hip thrust, okay? So band is on, weight is here for using weight. We're up and down for 45 seconds. We quickly transition, stand it up. You could probably leave your band on. We're then gonna go into our stiff legged deadlift. So I'll be using a kettlebell. Two dumbbells can also be used, okay? Stiff-legged, again, would be right about here, okay? This would be more of a traditional deadlift. This is stiff-legged. I do not want you here. That's locked out. That's using more of your joint. 
We want to be in a slight bend so that we can really lengthen the tailbone, lengthen the back of the hamstrings, and contract them, okay? So again, this is traditional deadlift. This is our stiff-legged, and we want to avoid here. All right. Final piece that we'll do, shoulders elevated. That's why the band staying on is kind of helpful. And then we'll finish with a sumo squat with an excessive hip hinge. So again, lots of movements to go through here. We will hit three rounds. Make sure the weight on your hips is adequate to be challenging you. All right, band is on, feet are lifted. All right, here we go. We take off in, Oops. hold up, hold up. I didn't set the clock right, my bad. Here we go, okay, <clears throat> taking off in 10, in five, four, three, two, and here we go. Squeeze and lift, spread the band as much as you can. Very good, next day's long. Pushing down into your surface, trying to get the glutes to pop on. Beautiful, you might also be feeling a bit of hamstrings and that's fine. Spread the band as much as you can. Posterior pelvic tilt to the top. What does that mean? That means your pelvic floor has to be lifted. That's the only way we can get into a posterior pelvic tilt is engagement of the pelvic floor. Beautiful work. 10 seconds. I think I am slipping. Push. Nice job. We're here for three, for two, and one quick transition, standing it up, getting ready for our stiff-legged deadlift. Taking off in three, in two, and here we go. Shoulder set, exhale, pull to the top, hip hinge, control it back down. Squeeze to the top, excellent work. So if you were to see yourself from the side, your shoulders are totally in a straight line. There is no rounding forward. If you've still got the band on, you are spreading the band on the way up and the way down. If we think about our feet, we have a beautiful equal amount of pressure spread throughout your whole entire foot. 14 seconds left. Hip hinge. Beautiful, Cecily, good. There we go. Nice, Lindsay. Nice, Meredith. That looks awesome. Three, two, and one. Shoulders elevated up on your step. I'm just gonna pad right up, oh boy. Three, two, here we go. Shoulders are elevated, we're spreading the band, squeeze and lift to the top, control down. Again, close to your pelvic tilt, all the way up to the top. Push through a nice even footbed. From here, we do take the band off. We're gonna go into an excessive lean sumo squat. Weight can be held down towards the floor or we can choose to hold it in a goblet position. Squeeze and lift. There's that butt burn. Woo -hoo. Feels so, so good. Push strong into the floor. Control the down, power to the top. Beautiful, control down. Nice, Melissa. Four, we are three, two, and one. Quick transition, it's always a little awkward. Band off. Sumo with an excessive lean, feet really wide. Weight down, three, two, here we go. Pull to the top, hip hinge, control down. Beautiful, hip hinge, bend those knees and push. Hip hinge, bend the knees. Again, we're doing this in a little bit of a fragmented style. Hip hinge, lower down, keep those knees driving out. Push those up. Excellent. 20 seconds left right here. I guess technically, this could be considered a sumo deadlift. We are doing a hip hinge and first pushing through the floor and then straightening back out through the hips. We have about five seconds. Feet elevated, hip thrust. Three, two, and one. Band on, we have six seconds. Quick transitions. Three, two, here we go. Push, control back down. And strong push into the floor. You're into your bench. Beautiful. Can you spread the band any extra? Really drive it apart. 
30 seconds right here. Push. So good. Come on, come on, come on. Up. Control down. Again, posterior pelvic tilt. Scooping your pelvis all the way to the top. Hide your ribs. We have 16 seconds. Come on. Beautiful. Stiff-legged deadlift. Coming up next. We have 10. So good. Push into the bench. Nice job. We have three, two, and one. Quick transition. So good. Okay, weight is down. Hip hinge position, shoulders down the back. Three, two, six. Here we go. Distance of your feet. They are just about underneath the hips. Pull strong to the top. Hips go way back. Remember, we want to be hip loaded, so don't put your knees this way. Knees stay back. 30 seconds. There we go. Beautiful. Big squeeze to the top. So good. 22 seconds. Nice, Cecily. Those look great. Good, Melissa. Drive your knees out. I bring your feet in slightly. Looks like your feet are a little too wide. I want your knees to go up further than your ankles. Drive your knees out. There you go, girl. Nice. Three, two, and one. Shoulders elevated. Six seconds. Weight is on the hips. If you're using weight, three, two. Here we go. Spread the band. Squeeze to the top. Push into the floor with a nice flat foot. Big push. Ooh, <laughs> that burn. It's so good. Up, control back down. Push. Nice job. Again, so important. Core is on. You've got a really strong engagement coming from your pelvic floor. Beautiful work. We have 15 seconds. If you missed this week's core workout, our focus in that for the next four weeks is proper engagement of your TBA. We started off really slow this week. Three, two, and one. But if you are somebody that has difficulty engaging the core properly, I would recommend going back because this right here is a perfect example of where we have. This is our sumo position of where we have an opportunity to dial in our connection with our core, keeping the TVA wrapped, but first leading from a nice strong pelvic floor. Beautiful, we have 25 seconds remaining. Hip hinge, control it down, big push. The more you drive your knees out this way, back, the more you're going to hit your glutes. Drive those knees out and back. Beautiful. Come on. We have five seconds left right here. Starting from the top one last time. Feet elevated. Three, two, and one. Quick, quick. Band on. We take off in four, three, two. Here we go. Thrust and control back down. Strong push to the top. Beautiful work. Up, hide the ribs. Again, con concentrating on lifting from the pelvic floor, rolling the hips to the top, rolling back down, hiding your ribs. We have 24 seconds remaining. My underbutt is like almost in a Charlie horse. 14 seconds, come on. So good. Up, control back down, squeeze to the top, come on. We have five, three, two, and one. Last time on our stiff legged deadlift. Feet about this wide apart. Three, two, six. here we go. Drive to the top, spread that band apart. Again, the knees do bend slightly, hips stay lifted. Beautiful work, hips go back. Up. 30 seconds left right here. As you sit your hips back, can you maintain pressure in your toes? Don't let those toes lift up. Up, come on. Up, so good, we have about 15 seconds left. You've got it. Hip hinge, 
gripping the floor with the toes, with the whole foot. We have five. Shoulders elevated, hip thrusts. Three, two, and one. Oh man. Six seconds. We take off in three, in two. Here we go. Strong thrust to the top. Control back down. Again, if you're in the right position with your head, every single time you get to the top, you should be looking straight out over your weight. Chin is tucked at the top position. That helps with the core engagement. Again, we can't have the core engagement. We can't have the glute uh, efficiency, the effectiveness of the glutes without the teamwork from your core. The pelvic floor has to be on. We have 12 seconds. Come on, push. So good. We have six. We have three, two, and one. Spam off. Done with that for work class, I believe, yes. Sumo, three, two, here we go. Hip hinge, grab it, pull to the top. Excellent. Can you keep the intensity of what you feel from all of those movements in your butt right now? Again, specifically for me, it's underneath my butt right now. It's not like in the top portion. It's underneath. Maybe you have a similar sensation. Push. 20 seconds. Drive your knees out. Take your time. The slower you move, the more chance you have, the better chance you have of connecting with your glutes. We save the speed for when we know we've got it. We have three, two, one. Ouch. <laughs> That's good. Good stuff right there. All right, we're gonna take a quick sip of water. Help yourself to one as well. Oh man, these necklaces. So, another really big set coming up. We are going into reverse lunge to a single leg deadlift for 45 seconds on one side and then over to the other. If you've never done this, start with no weight. If you've done this and you know that you can maintain control of your body, feel free to pick up a weight. If you're using a weight, if you're standing on the left leg, I would like the weight to be in the opposite hand, the right. Why? Because it can help us stay square. We don't want to be opening up and if the weight is on this side, it's a little bit more conducive to same square. So we step back, we stand, we go right into a single leg deadlift. Okay, 45 seconds on one side, 45 seconds on the other. We're then gonna go into an isometric bridge. It'll just be flat on the floor, weight on the hips. If you really want to, you can throw the band on. That does help kind of with that connection. So if you are still struggling with glute connection, I would throw the band on for that one. 45 seconds on. I'm gonna start my round with holding a 35 pound kettlebell in my right hand, if that helps you at all. At some point, I might switch over to two dumbbells. We take off in three, two, here we go. So right foot steps back, stand tall, hip hinge down to your single leg deadlift, pull strong to the top, repeat on this side. Hip hinge, remember the weight does not have to hit the floor should not hit the floor. If anything, it's a gentle tap. But again, if you are, say, somebody who's hypermobile, like you, Danielle, I want to advise you or inspire you, motivate you to challenge yourself and not touch the floor. Pausing maybe in a hovering position two inches above the floor. We have five. We have three, two, and one. Holy shit. Woo! Nice job. The slower and more controlled you can move through that, that's a sign of strength. So think of it that way. Try not to rush. Three, two, and one. If you're new to this, it might be a little rush, and that's one way to assess yourself. Noticing as you gain control, your speed slows down. Beautiful. 30 seconds left here. Hips and shoulders are square. I'm gonna turn this way. To finish this set, 
just so we have a lateral view. Beautiful. Deep lunge, push tall, strong hip hinge, keeping control of the weight. 12 seconds left. External rotation with the standing leg. Tension through the right side of the body. We have three, two, and one. Isometric bridge. Weight comes right up onto the hips. Hips lift and we hold. 45 seconds on the clock beginning now. This is not a resting position. I want you to intensify what you feel right now by going into a stronger posterior pelvic tilt, driving your knees out to the side while keeping all toes on the ground, pushing strongly down into the floor. From here, we stand up. We begin again on that left leg. Right leg will be going back. If you're holding one weight, the weight is in the right hand. 20 seconds left right here. Remember in our bridge position, it's not about the height. I don't care how high your hips are. You can even be hovering one inch off the floor. That might even be better for you. We have five seconds. We have three, two, and lower down. Quick transition. Let's try to stand it on up. <laughs> oh, there are those legs. All right, weight in the right hand. If you're doing single arm, three, two, here we go. Reverse lunge. Stand tall into single leg deadlift. <sighs> Belly stays drawn in nice and tight. <sighs> in your reverse lunge, make sure you're still leaning forward so that we do stay in the glute. <sighs> if you bring the torso too upright, <sighs> you will transfer the work to the right quadricep. <sighs> Barely any weight <sighs> is going onto that right foot, that right leg, trying to keep it all on the left. Hip square. <sighs> Shoulders square. 10 seconds. Beautiful work, everyone. Come on. We have four. We have three. Two. And three. Rest. Oh my God. Ouch. <laughs> Other side. Weight is up. Three. Two. Here we go. Reverse lunge with a strong hip hinge. Single leg deadlift. Pull strong to the top. Single leg deadlift. We have a slight bend in the leg, in the right leg. Nice job. 30 seconds. Come on. You got this shoulder square. Keep that left shoulder nice and active. Don't let it protract to the floor. Keep it retracted. Come on. 15 seconds. So good. 10 more seconds. You've got it. Push, push, push. We have four, three, two, one. Oh. Bridge. We take off in four, three, two. Here we go. We're up, we're holding. Woo. Try to clear out any excess CO2 that is in your lungs with a strong exhale. Beautiful work, everyone. We're almost through. We gotta get through one more round. Belly, lower belly pulled up and in. Pushing strong through, flat feet. 16 seconds left right here. Get those hamstrings on board as well. We have 10, one more round. We have six. Three, two, release back down. Stand up. Final working round of this trio. Right hand with the weight. Three, two, here we go. Reverse lunge. Push tall. Single leg deadlift. Reverse it. Tall. Shoulder stays active. Stand tall again. Beautiful work. Now, let's talk about balance real quick. Balance is something that comes, in my opinion, when you stop thinking about it. If you go through your checklist, are my shoulders square? Are my hips square? Am I in external rotation? Those things will help you source balance. Without control of those things, three, two, and one, there's no way we will find balance. 
So it's control of other areas of your body, more so than control of balance itself. Three, two, here we go. Step it back, stand tall, hip hinge. So for example, I was a lefty, left leg gymnast. All of my work in these workouts, when we do unilateral work on my left side, feels stronger. I have more control in that hip. This right side, I tend to not have as great of success with balance because I still need to develop more control of this hip. External rotation on the right side of my body is different than on the left. We all have asymmetries, things that aren't equal. Three, two, and one. And that's okay. The human body is not perfect, and that's why it's actually perfect. But through awareness, three, two, it sucks. Through awareness, which is also to say the greatest presence, through awareness of our body, we can start to notice, ah, the right side of my body feels different. And then start to get curious, right? Maybe without weights. Maybe while you're waiting for your kids to finish a play date. <laughs> Maybe every time you go up the stairs, focusing on external rotation. <sighs> every time you sit on the toilet, can you sit down without crashing? Developing control and using everyday life as a little testing space, a little bit of testing ground. We have five, three, two, one. Roll it down and just chill for a second. <laughs> Alright, well that was a heavy set. Awesome. We are going into one of our final rounds. It'll be on the floor. Uh, that's where we're going to start in a kneeling position. So if you need a pad for your knees, grab it. So one of our main focuses for four weeks will be a deadlift, which is a hip hinge. So one of my favorites since quarantine is doing our kneeling good morning. We have the ability to anchor our heels. And when I say anchor, they wouldn't be able to do this. They were stuck. We could do what we call a Nordic curl, which is something like this. So that's essentially what we're trying to replicate. And if you do this right now with no weight, put your hands on your butt, belly nice and tight. I want you to try to keep your hips over your knees, which is hard because we'll fall forward. But Start to hinge forward. These have to be on to keep you under control. Meredith, did you just crash? <laughs> Squeeze to the top. Hip hinge forward, keep the glutes on, never turn them off, and then contract them even more to pull you up. Do you all feel that? Yeah? So try not to do this, because that's gonna get your quads. So you are trying to keep your butt up away from your heels, okay? There is something about it sitting back, but don't sit down, because then that's your quads, okay? So we start with that. You can do no weight, or put a weight on your back, or hold a weight right here at your chest. We're then gonna do a marching glute bridge. That's gonna be more of like an activation, core connection thing. Then we're gonna go into a seated, uh, sorry, a box squat jump. So you'll have your box out, we sit and we jump, we sit and we jump. If you're not doing that, I want you to work on a weighted uh, box squat. And then we'll do a diagonal lunge, which I'll get to. We're kind of moving fast through this because I want to hit it all, but you will have enough time to learn as we go. All right, so 45 seconds on. Taking off in three, two, here we go. Strong hip hinge, belly stays tight, press to the top. Hip hinge, keep the glutes on, push. We have about 35 seconds left. Head stays neutral, that's going to help keep it in your glutes, believe it or not. We don't want to round the back, we want to keep our back nice and straight. Nice job, y'all. 20 seconds. Good, bring that torso forward. Nice, Cecily. Very good. There you go, Melissa. Nice, Meredith. We have eight seconds. Hips go back and squeeze. Hip hinge forward, three, two. And one, weight is off. Careful with your dismount there. Bridge position, hips are up. Don't worry about a band or anything. 
Okay, his feet are in a little narrower than normal. Drive the right knee up, put it down. Drive the left. As you drive, I want it to be a quick drive because what that's going to do is it's going to trigger this glute to stabilize. Drive as if you're trying to push your knee into your head and then find stability and bring it down. Drive, find stability, bring it down. Hips are level, meaning not one hip drops as you're going through this marching position. Quick drive. Nice, belly stays tight. Hide your ribs. Bringing out our box, coming up next, a chair works as well. We have three, two, and one. Okay, box is out. We sit, believe it or not, ready? Watch, just move with me. We sit and jump. Sit and spring from that seated position. Beautiful. Up. Now, if that doesn't feel good for you, you are holding a weight right here and you are going into box squats. Up. So you're going from dead, no movement, to explode. Come on. Still, to explode. Come on. Up. Yes, 15. Come on, belly stays tight. Explode. Good, and up. That's that explosive power. Come on. You got it. Five, three, two, one. One weight. Feet straight ahead. We step at a diagonal. Put the butt back to the center. Three, two, here we go. Step, butt goes back and push. Similar to our pivoting squats, except this leg stays straight. Beautiful. Bring it back in a diagonal. Hips go way, way back. Butt back, 25 seconds. Sit it down and back and push. The further you stick your butt back, the more you're gonna get that glute. 15 seconds. Come on. So good. Hips back and push. Hips back, big push. Kneeling, good morning, is coming up next. Three, two, and one. This could be done from here as well in a standing position if that's what feels better for you. I will demo on this round. Three, two, here we go. Again, kneeling is fine. Just showing another option. Hips go back. Belly is tight. There's a slight bend to the knees. Don't let your knees go anywhere over your toes. Come on. Belly stays engaged so that the back is supported. Hip hinge and drive. We only need to go to horizontal with the torso. If that doesn't even need to go that low. We have six. Nice job, marching blue bridge in three, two, and one. Dismounting that weight. Marching glute bridge. Taking off in four, three, two, hips are up, and drive, and drive. If you take a peek at your hips, neither one of them is dropping as you drive. Now remember, this isn't a walk in the park knee drive. This is like a lethal, as fast as you can, drive it toward your head and then slow it down as it returns to the floor. Quick up, slow down. Quick up, really slow on the down. Almost there, we have about 15 seconds. Come on, up, very good. Nice job, we have five, three, two, and one. Getting ready for our box squat jump. You can start in a seated position. Transfer of power. Explode up. Three, two, here we go. Sit it back down with control. Explode. And sit. It's a full sit. Up. Yes, come on. Up. How high can you jump? Push. Yes, come on. 25 seconds. Come on. Beautiful. 20 seconds. If you have anger, 
if you have rage, if you are upset about the ongoings in the world, push them away from you. Get that energy out. Four, come on. Three, two, one. Oh my God. Ugh. Diagonal lunge. I'm gonna go this way so you can see angles a little bit differently. Three, two, here we go. Diagonal, sit the hips back and push. Hips go back and push. One leg stays straight, other one catches us, we sit back, find our power, and push back to the start. Come on, big push, so good. One more round after this, we're just about there. Come on, about 15 seconds. Come on, good, push, nice, we have seven. Push, four, three, two, and one. You get to choose how you want to do this good morning. Kneeling or standing, three, two, here we go. Hip hinge, hip hinge applies whether you're kneeling or standing, hips go back. Beautiful. Knees go back. If you're standing, corkscrew your feet into the ground. All toes are active, gripping as you go through. About 16 seconds left. Come on, keep those glutes on. Big push into the floor to stand. Hip extension. Up, come on. We have five. Three. Two, and one. Down with those. Marching blue bridge. Three, two. Here we go, hips are up. Drive. Nice job. Up. Control the down. Quick up and control. There we go, ladies. Now you got the speed. Hopefully you are feeling how that intense knee drive causes the stabilizing, the working glute to catch, right? You've got to have power pushing through that foot to generate the power of the drive. And then it's got to catch and stabilize. Drive, catch, stabilize. Come on. 14 seconds remaining. You're so strong. Come on. Stay with it. Can you drive half harder? <laughs> harder. <laughs> Can you drive faster and harder? Oh, that was great. Three, two, and one. <laughs> That's a new one. Can you drive farther? Uh, box. Three, two, here we go. Sprint up. Nice. Sit it down. Sprint up. Come on. Hop. Very good. Hop. Nice job, everyone. Let's go. Hop. So good. Drive those knees out, don't let them tip in. Nice. Hop. We have 15 seconds. Hop. Yes, eight seconds. Come on. You got it. Push. We have three, two, and one. Oh. Five seconds. Diagonal. Three, two. Here we go. Step it down and back. Last move. We are done right after this. Come on. Stay with me, ladies. You got this. Diagonal, sit down and back. Push. Stay in your body. Don't escape. Don't go to the to-do list yet. Stay here. Focus on your breath. Focus on your core. Focus on your butt. Come on. That's our focus here today. Can you stay connected? Can you gain connection to your glutes? Come on, push. They are your largest muscle group. Four, three, two, and one. That is it. If you're staying for a stretch, we will focus on our glutes, our hips. 
clock is going to start right now. If at any point you have to leave, amazing. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to start in a seated figure four. Taking, let's do the left first, left foot up and over the top of the right knee. Flex the left toes. Rinse it up nice and tall. If your spine is rounded at all, you are trying to work yourself to a point where you can sit up nice and tall, okay? Your glutes are composed of three muscles. Those three muscles make up your largest muscle group. If we get into science real quick, which I'm even hesitant to say that, but the more muscle you have, the more calories your body needs at rest in order to survive. That is your basal metabolic rate. If you are able to access your glutes, which many of us have not had access to, we're gaining access to at this point. If you can get your biggest muscle group, your largest muscle group, switch feet, to start operating fully, do you know what's gonna happen to your metabolism? Through the roof. You've got a fat burning machine right here. This is your power for so many different reasons. But if we're talking from a strength and a body composition point of view, this is where everyone, male or female, your power lies. That is where your jump lies, your speed, other things assist it. But this is, this is the Mac Daddy right there. So if we continue to focus on glute activation and continue to strengthen that neuromuscular development, the neuromuscular, the mind-body connection, we change our whole entire lives. Everything changes when you find your glutes. I say that because I know because it happened to me. I didn't have glutes for a long ass time, 28 years really. Okay, pyramid-ish stance. So left leg out in front, right leg behind. If you need to, you can come up onto the toes of the right foot. Slight bend, very slight bend to the left leg, hips square. We're going to hip hinge forward. I am gonna put my back foot down. So we're finding that nice long tabletop position with the torso. This front leg, try not to lock it out. If you do lock it out, make sure you tighten the quadricep. So go into that nice active locked up position as opposed to just resting on the bone. If you have a slight bend, stay there, you're totally fine. Everyone try to hide your ribs. Beautiful, hands on the hips, neck long. We're here for 10, nine. Trying to get in through the backside of the hamstring. We're here for four, three, two, one, soften the knee, hands to the floor. We're gonna go ahead and go into a half splits position. So lifting the right leg towards the ceiling. If you feel comfortable, you're gonna to try to walk your hands further back towards the left leg, pressing the right heel towards the ceiling. We're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Did I say half splits? This isn't half splits. I don't know what I'm talking about, but we're in this position for three, for two. And one, placing the left hand somewhere out in front of the left foot. Open the hips. Stay here in a half moon position. If you need to, keep the right hands on the floor. Otherwise, reach the right hands up towards the ceiling. And if you'd like to go into a quad stretch, go ahead and grab that right ankle crease and pull. We're here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Next day's long, we're here for four, three, slowly releasing the bind if you have one, two, and one hand to the floor, right hand to the floor. Step the right foot down, standing forward fold, softening your knees as necessary, creating length throughout your spine. Allow your head to rest nice and heavy. See if you feel a difference between that left side of your hip and your right, bend the knee, roll on up. Step the right foot forward, the left foot back. Again, left heel can be lifted if that's what feels best for you. Otherwise, that left heel is down on the floor. Micro bend to the front leg if you need to. Hip hinge forward, pulling the right hip back. <sighs> left hip pulls forward, squaring your hips. Spine is long from your tailbone to the crown of your head for 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Soften the knee, reach for the floor. 
Go ahead and extend the left heel towards the ceiling, pressing the palms into the floor, pushing yourself, your torso back towards the right leg. We're here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, good, 4, 3, 2, one, the right hand out in front of the right foot, open the hips, stacking them, maybe even flex the left foot, and then go into half moon, if you feel comfortable with it, lifting the left hand up off the floor. If you would like to go into that bind, please by all means do. We are here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, releasing the bind. Hand comes towards the floor, feet meet, soften the knees, toe heel the feet out to the sides, forward fold in a split legged a wide stance, pulling yourself towards the floor. If you want to get into your glutes a little bit more here, think of tilting your sit bones up towards the ceiling. We're here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and 5, beautiful, 4, 3, 2, one, dropping down into Buddha. So, might turn the toes out a little bit, if that's what feels best for you. We are working on this position uh, in regards to our front squat. So if that sounds familiar, we did this on Monday. Use your elbows to drive the knees out. A little bounce if you'd like. Usually we don't recommend bouncing, but you know what? It feels good sometimes. <laughs> Hands to heart center. Again, using the elbows to drive the knees out. We're here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Quick test. Can you lift the hands and maintain that squat position? No judgment. Hands to the floor. Step the feet back. Tabletop position. And we're going to roll out the hips. This is how we'll finish. So what we do here is we shift the hips over to the left. And you might feel... But you should be feeling what, what is possible is the head of the femur kind of goes into this hip. And now you're going to rock the hips forward and back, starting with a small range of motion because sometimes this can be a little aggressive. But you're really putting all the weight over onto that left side of the body and using the head of the femur to roll through that hip. We're here for five, four, three, two, one, switch sides, leaning hips over to the right, pull forward, and then push back. Pull forward, and push back. Excellent, we're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Ooh, awesome work. We are done. If you feel like you get tight through the hips, Seated figure four, what we started with, is an excellent one to go to, especially if you are at a desk. It's really good to open up those hips. Nice work, ladies. Um, tomorrow we have hit with weights. If you're there, amazing. Looking forward to seeing you. And if not, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and weekend. Bye. <laughs>